All right, you're thinking about doing some extra work or background work or supporting artist work. Yes, those are all basically the same thing, just different names, and I will probably use them interchangeably throughout this. And what that is, is the person in the background of a film. You often will be ha told to walk from here to there. Maybe the main actor will walk past you. You might be in a restaurant. That's a very common one for background artists is to be sitting in the background pretending to eat food. You can do fun stuff. Sometimes you might be the bartender, for example, or any number of other things. That's background work or extra work is the most commonly used term. And I'm going to go into some kind of the goods and bads and a little bit of advice as to if you do want to get into it, what to look for, and even what to take with you on set. The thing with, to keep in mind with it is that you can't, you most likely won't get promoted to a lead role. I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions about being an extra is that the director will see you be like, oh my gosh, you look fantastic. Here, let's upgrade you and give you a lead role. You will occasionally be updated to having a line or two. Sometimes that will happen. That's happened to me where they're like, hey, can you come in and say, you know, this line and then go. And that's kind of the best you can hope for when working as an extra. It's great because A, you get lines, you can get your names in the credits, and you get a little more pay for that. It's usually not very much. And I guess the pay is probably a key aspect of working as an extra. It doesn't necessarily pay that well. It pays okay. And I have heard of people that do make a living out of working as an extra, but it's really challenging. One, because any kind of acting work is intermittent. You might go weeks without getting into work, uh, and then you might get a whole bunch. It's hard to know. And the hours are long. As an extra, you might be told to show up at five in the morning, for example, and then be there for 12, 14 hours, which is good and bad because A, once you hit a certain point in the day, you start get paid in overtime, which is decent money. But again, you're getting up super early and being there super early to quite often just sit around. If you're doing a production where there's a lot of extras, they'll have the extras show up very early get them in costume, get them in makeup, that kind of stuff, and then you're just stuck sitting there waiting for something to happen. Another nice thing about working as an extra is it does get you on a film set. So if you are looking to get into the industry, you do get to see how a film set works. You get to see the different roles that people play and the back behind the scenes production, and you get to see an actress process. Often you might get to see a pretty famous lead actor and how they kind of go about doing their thing. The key is just make sure you know your place. Don't go up, start talking to them if it's not allowed or if they're in the kind of their zone. Uh, same thing, you're rarely ever going to talk to the director of the production. It's usually like some production assistant or one of the ADs will be the ones giving you your directions. Um, so you do need to make sure to know your place on the set and it's Often at the bottom of the list, you do tend to get treated like cattle and just herded around. I was watching an interview. It was actually Samuel L. Jackson's masterclass on acting, and he did talk about being on set and seeing the way they treat actors, and his attitude was, I'm paraphrasing, by the way, so this is an exact quote, but you can watch his masterclass if you want. It's really brilliant. He talks about how, like, there's most things he'll do on a set. He, he, I think at the time he was working as a stand-in, but again, it was a while ago that I watched this, so it could be wrong. And he talked about like, there's one thing I won't do, and that's pretty much be an extra because of the bit way they are treated. And Go watch the class to get the actual quote. But the point being is you're not necessarily treated that well, and you need to be okay with that. You do sometimes, especially I think with smaller productions, get treated much better or smaller need of extras like I've done things where I've been just like one of five or something like that you'll usually get treated better but if you're one of like 200 no you're not 
Uh, they do usually feed you, which is nice on the production. And so there are advantages to getting in the industry. And especially if like, let's say you have a normal job and you just kind of want to dabble a little bit. It's a nice way to make a little extra cash. You will often sit there for hours and do nothing. And you might spend an entire day and be on set for 20 minutes. And I've had this experience where I'm just sitting there reading my book, drinking coffee or tea all day long. You get called to set, you're on set for 20 minutes, and then you go and sit and you're not released. You might even go there and not get used at all, period. You just sit there all day long. That does happen. And so that's kind of the stuff to keep in mind. And with that in mind, I would say there are certain things with you to bring with you when you come to set. Bring a book or something to do. I've seen people bring their laptops and do their job in between takes and scenes and stuff. Uh, or I always bring a book. I'll have a book with me. I'll have a cup. Uh, sometimes they will provide you cups. Uh, not this one. I'll usually bring like a um, yeah, more portable cup. But sometimes they provide you cups to put your tea and coffee into. Sometimes they don't. Uh, I will bring snacks. Sometimes they're good about feeding you. Sometimes they're not. Keep in mind the weather. Are you going to be outdoors or indoors? Uh, they often won't tell you up until you've accepted the job. And that's kind of stuff that you need to think about as well. Like if you're going to be outdoors in the cold weather, maybe throw some thermals on underneath your clothes to stay warm. With a phone, maybe bring a charger so that you've got that. And keep in mind, sometimes you won't be allowed to have your phone on set, especially nowadays because a lot of productions are really worried about people with phones taking pictures of behind the scenes and then posting them on social media. Yeah, and so they will take your phones away from you on occasion. And so if you don't have a book to read or something to entertain yourself, well, you're kind of stuck there. Um, I will often take things like Besides snacks and a book and a cup, ibuprofen or aspirin in case I get a headache for whatever reason, or uh, gum or mint, just because you might be talking in close proximity. As you can see, I'm a bit scruffy, and usually they'll tell me in advance to shave, that they want me clean shaven, but sometimes they won't. And so I'll keep a razor in my bag just in case I show up and they're like, hey, you were supposed to shave. I'll be like, shave. If it's a good production, they'll actually have racers there and they'll just give you one. Bring a bottle of water. Also very important. They will often give you water or give you access to water, but just in case, have a bottle of water with you. I have been on a production where they really didn't give us anything to drink and it was really irritating and I was glad that I had water, but um, it also would have been nice if when they fed us lunch, they gave us something to drink with it. If you're trying to get work as an extra, it used to be like back when I started, it, my, it would go through my regular agent that they were looking for extras. Now there's separate agencies that do casting for extras. And so you can just do an internet search for extra agencies, background agencies, that kind of stuff. There's a ton of them out there. Most of them are decent. Things to look for is if they want any money up front, that's an instant no. That's anything with acting, really. So if they say, okay, we'll represent you as an extra, but you need to go to our photographer to get some headshots done. No. Um, you will represent you, but you need to pay a fee. Some do charge fees, but they'll take it out of your first booking. So for example, there's one that how they work is they charge 140 a year, I think is what they charge to be a member. But what they do is they don't charge you until they get you booked on something. So they take the 140 out of your booking. And then they also take an extra 10% of however much you get paid. Uh, other ones might be a little different where they charge you no monthly or, or no annual fee, but they take a bit larger. So instead of maybe 10%, they take 15% or 20% or something like that. This will vary depending on where you are. So that's why I'm not giving any exacts because you need to look to where you are. And you can be a member of multiple background casting agencies. Keep in mind that you will get cast based on your behavior on previous productions. So if you show up on set and you have a bad attitude or you're late, any of that kind of stuff, they do make a note of it. They send it to the agency and you might not get any work again. So always be on your best behavior. Show up, 
Just say, yes, I'll do that, whatever. Don't complain, keep your mouth shut and do what they need to do for the day and then go home. Don't make plans afterwards because often they will keep you later than expected. Great, because you get extra pay, but if you have plans for dinner or whatever, you're gonna to have to cancel those dinner plans. So my advice, don't make plans for anything else that day. I had a situation where I was booked for three days of filming and I had said no to other stuff. Then the day before filming was supposed to start, I get an email saying, okay, they've cut you. They don't, they're not gonna need you. And I had, so basically I went those three days with no work and they can do that to you. If it's within a certain amount of hours, they do have to pay you something. This particular situation, they cut me one hour prior to that deadline. And so they didn't have to pay me anything. And I got nothing for three days because of that. So that's kind of it. That's a bit on working as an extra if you want to do it. Give it a try. You can try it out. Decide you like it, don't like it. If you got a unique look, that sometimes helps. A friend of mine, he will sometimes sport like a nice mustache or something like that. That helps him get cast. If you are of a certain ethnicity, that also helps actually. And uh, age as well. There's not as many people uh, older than certain ages looking for background work. And so if casting agencies need somebody like that, it, working as a stand-in sometimes will come through background casting agencies and stand-in work is actually nice work to do because you're standing in for the lead actor you get a decent check for it uh, often you get to meet the lead actor and uh, chat with them which is nice so there you go that's just kind of some quick tips on getting into background work and what to look for if you want to do it it's pretty easy to get into the pay isn't great but it gets you into the industry and might give you a start into pursuing acting if you want. Or it might give you a taste and you'd be like, you know what? Now I know I don't want to give this a try. There you go. Leave a comment if you have any other questions on the subject. I used to do a decent amount of background work. I don't really do it anymore, but uh, based on that experience in the past, hopefully I can help answer any questions that you might have.